Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is actually a blissfully cool and cloudy Monday morning in the collapse of global industrial civilization. <coughs> Back in the great state of Texas, I am. Uh, I have planet nibbling going on on both sides. We have stereo planet nibbling. Another Monday morning, business as usual in the great state of Texas. That would be Monday, April 4th, 2022. And so hot off the presses, guys. Uh, we have the latest uh, dire, stark, whatever. Did, didn't we just have one of these damned, I, I, I could swear it was like two weeks ago we had some dire stark warning from the United Nations about how uh, this planet uh, it is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, and right now, I mean, as I'm talking, I guess the, the mainstream media is rolling off with the news. Uh, I might come back in a couple of days. We're, we're, we're just going to touch on one of these and then look at a little... Uh, background some intelligent uh, reporting on the mainstream media but of course we're just going I don't know this is uh, I guess this is just Yahoo News's version it's now or never yes it's now or never IPC warns that emissions must decline by 2025, three years to avoid dangerous climate change. Yes, so we have three years to kick the can down the road to avoid dangerous climate change. So we have three more years uh, to go right on about business as usual three years of uh, planet nibbling uh, just keep right on going for three more years and we will avoid dangerous climate change there you go since obviously there is there is no dangerous climate change going on yet so as i say we're just going to get a a little bit of flavor from the mainstream media it's now or never that is the urgent call to action today from the world's leading authority on climate change, which warns that global emissions must start declining, must start declining in under three years and be slashed in half by 2030 to prevent dangerous temperature rise. It is going to be 95 here in Texas tomorrow. Uh, the latest IPCC report was published today after the international talks blew past a Friday deadline. We're going to talk more about this in the next story. With scientists and government officials struggling to reach consensus. The report, which is reviewed line by line, was finally signed off late Sunday by 195 member governments after the longest approval process in the IPCC's 34-year history. And uh, so that is what I'm getting ready to talk about, is that about this uh, this report being watered down corporate greenwashing horse shit. So let's see, uh, the watered down version, which was not the version that the scientists, the actual climatologist, make no mistake about it. Uh, this is not the uh, original version of this report. The official, uh, you know, edited report found that limiting Earth's average temperature rise to the ambitious one and a half degrees C agreed by nations under the Paris 
agreement will require, quote, immediate and deep emissions cuts across every sector of society. In short, the IPC says the world is at a crossroads on whether we seize, we seize the opportunity to avoid climate catastrophe. Yes. Uh, quoting IPCC Chair Hu Song Lee, quote, the decisions we make now can secure a livable future. We have the tools and know-how required to limit warming. Close quote. So, among the key findings of the watered-down, greenwashed report, yes, greenhouse gas emissions must begin to decline by 2025 at the latest and be cut by 43 percent by 2030 to achieve the one and a half C limit. Oh uh, yes, and methane needs to be reduced by around one-third by 2030. Yes. Even if these cuts are achieved, the IPCC notes, quote, it is almost inevitable, quote, the one and a half C threshold will be temporarily exceeded but could return to below one and a half C by the end of the century. Well, I guess if uh, humans do go extinct and somewhere, I don't know, around 2070, if the population of humanity living in the Stone Age by 2070, uh, after every one of our fellow Earthlings is fried, maybe uh, that is a true statement. All right. Limiting global warming will require a substantial reduction in fossil fuel use. Yes. Widespread electrification, improved energy efficiency and use of alternative fuels like hydrogen. Yes. Don't forget the importance of sustainable healthy diets. Yes. Uh, of course, more money is needed. Uh, so they're claiming that we are now 1.1 degree above pre-industrial times and the climate crisis is already unleashing a spiral of catastrophes. Yes. The IPCC says global temperatures will stabilize when emissions reach net zero. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Uh, then it talks about, you know, how rich honkies, we're the ones to blame. Uh, that the little brown people have nothing to do with this. That India, for instance, completely innocent. Of course it was India was one of the major people uh, holding up this report. Uh, don't forget Saudi Arabia arguing that fossil fuels will still be needed for decades to come, which is certainly the, the truest uh, sentence I have read since I sat down in this chair. Uh, some scientists called out the report's emphasis on individual behavior change and technologies like carbon capture and storage, which are still unproven at scale. This is uh, 
Professor Miles Allen from Oxford, quote, once again, the fossil fuel industry has played a blinder at a time of rising car carbon dioxide emissions, record profits, and a rush to license new oil and gas fields, all the headlines around the latest IPCC report are about how we, how we are going to have to change our behavior and pay to scrub carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, what is this? Did he say something about record profits? How about this uh, story right next to all these stories? Exxon signals record quarterly profit from oil and gas prices. Right here from good old Houston, Texas. Exxon Mobil Corporation said on Monday this morning its first quarter production results could top a seven-year quarterly record with operating profits from pumping oil and gas of up to 9.3 billion dollars. Yes. Uh, the blockbuster oil and gas profits offer a preview of what lies ahead for other firms' oil earnings. Do you think so? So I am uh, going to... Uh, I'm going to let you draw your own dots between uh, that story and this story from good old Axios uh, talking about this is their spin. Uh, this is the most honest. This is as close as you're going to get to uh, honest reporting about this new. Uh, I this new. I don't even want to call it an IPCC report. It is a UN report. You know, this is why when I'm talking about that the science, the science, the IPCC, uh, their data, my only problem with it, even the IPCC is too conservative, but they are getting a little bit better it's not the scientist that if, that if the climatologist uh, at the IPCC were allowed to write this report, it would be a, a, at least a little bit more honest about how doomed we are. And uh, this is Axios trying to explain to all of these uh, right-wing conspiracy wackos uh, talking. Uh, 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 it, anyway, I'm not going to give them any voice here. Debate over pivotal climate report breaks a record. An agenda driving United Nations climate report uh, lays out pathways toward a lower carbon, more resilient, and less perilous future. Yes, the report was supposed to surface, you know, hours before it did, but negotiations between, between IPCC scientists and the panel's government representatives blew way past their deadline. This is where, you know, you take these reports from scientists and hand them to politicians, where politicians uh, who are depending uh, on being voted back in and, you know, and kept in power are given red line editorial privileges to override what 
the climatologists themselves uh, are saying. And this is true in all of these UN reports. It's not just this one. It's just that this one uh, broke all records in the 34-year history. They've been doing this shit for 34 years and this was their worst performance as the politicians you know wanting to stay in power and to continue with business as usual and to keep kicking the can down the road uh, have the right to override the language of the actual climate scientist um, all right, that is revealing. Countries were mired in battles over how to wordsmith key conclusions, including the need to quickly shift away from fossil fuels and the necessary policy to do that. Financial assistance and technological levers to pull to accomplish this. The heated discussion, the heated discussion, you know, between the scientist who wrote the original draft of the report and this watered-down drivel uh, that, that came out, uh, the longest in three decades of these big IPCC reports reflects the fact that we are at a climate change hinge point. Yes. Uh, the IPCC's assessment reports, all you know, all of them, this is just the latest, set the terms of the climate debate with world leaders, corporate CEOs, and activists. Uh, and so, uh, one of the conclusions uh, that you might not read here, there is no time left. There is not three years, ten years, there is not ten minutes. Thank you. There is no time left to delay action, to have any chance of meeting the Paris Agreement's temperature targets. The agreement's more ambitious target of limiting warming to one and a half C above pre-industrial levels is already slipping out of reach. It slipped out of reach probably in about 1970. Uh, so let's look at the context according to this analysis in uh, Axios. The report's expected call for radical changes is a huge departure from current policies and ways of doing business worldwide. While scientists determine the content, C-O-N-T-E-N-T, -E -T, not C-O-N-T-E-X-T, while scientists determine the content of the reports, the summaries are negotiated by consensus. I love that word, consensus between scientists and policy makers. One country's objection, and it was mainly India, uh, the, the number one stumbling block here, to watering down one country out of 195, one country's objection to one single word can hold up the entire process. In this case, you know, with this latest report, multiple countries were reported to have raised issues with different sections of the text, you know, as originally worded by climate scientists. Uh, the combination of scientists and government representatives 
is unique, uh, you know, to these UN IPCC reports and serves to encourage government buy-in. That's a weird term, government buy-in. What that means is politicians and corporate CEOs uh, carte blanche to override uh, the scientific consensus showing, uh, you know, how doomed we are. That this is, out of all of these other, you don't read about this in all of these other UN reports where, uh, where politicians and, and uh, fossil fuel corporate executives and lobbyists can override the language in the report. This is unique to these climate reports. The summary for policymakers is what most people in power will read. This is just another reason for the word-by-word -word approval. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So what are we watching? What we're watching with this latest report, previously released IPCC reports in the past year, uh, starkly, there we go, starkly laid out how swiftly the globe is warming with the effects evident from the deep sea to the tallest mountain peaks. Yes. They established the case for making changes that are transformational in how we live, but now the new third chapter spells out our options in unprecedented detail, calling for rapid and dramatic emissions cuts well beyond what any country, what any country on this planet is close to accomplishing along with the development of as yet unproven climate tech such as direct air capture. Yes, uh, these technologies are as yet unproven at scale and may have significant downsides. So what is the bottom line according uh, to this study on Axios? The bottom line, the emissions trends you know, going up, up, up. Uh, they were, you know, breaking a new record last year. The emissions trends heading straight up into record territory and policies being put into place right now, right now, you know, to battle these rising emissions are either the exact opposite of what the report will recommend, which is a push for more oil and gas drilling, or in some cases they just don't go nearly far enough talking about voluntary emissions reduction pledges. And, uh, you, you, you know, uh, eating, let you know, act, acting like there's anything that individuals are going to do. Anyway, guys, uh, I am sure the mainstream media is going to be having its heyday talking uh, about this uh, report. Uh, that pro I, I would love to see the original wording. We, I, I guarantee you. We will never see the original wording of this report. Uh, ain't gonna happen. So what we're gonna get is just the, you know, these big, fat, watered down uh, lies. This is what happens when you give uh, the CEOs of corporations that just put 9.3 billion dollars of profits in their pockets in the last three months.
this is what happens. You get this worthless piece of green washing crap that uh, the bottom line is not going to do one thing to uh, change uh, anything on this planet. It's going to kick the can down another three years. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up because uh, I have to get in my gas sucking truck, go put some. I see gas is three dollars and seventy nine cents here in Texas today, and uh, got things to do on this cloudy day. Get out there and enjoy the next three years of kicking the can down the road while well, you still can. Bye, guys.